lovelies, welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy the next video. I hope you see something that you like, that you learn something that you want to try, or that you have questions that you would want to do the research and see if it's something you want to do. Alrighty, enjoy the video. Okay. This is one of my favorite parts with working with rhinestones. And that is peeling back this and revealing the design. When I cut my flock, a lot of people like to apply the blue, the flock directly onto their Cricut mat, but I don't like that because I don't wanna have to be bothered with all them dots scraping off. So I like to, to cut with the backing still on. And if you have some dots that are still left, what I do is put it on the back of this I have me a new blade and it's in training because most of the time when I do the peel back of the flock, it normally peels like butter and all of the dots stay behind, but it want to show off for me tonight, but that's okay. I just press it on the backing and... They should stay behind the rest of them. We shall see. There's one right there. There is another one. And these things, they are real sticky. You'll go to bed late at night and you'll have these blue dots all over and you'll be like, where'd you come from? Okay, I think those are all the dots. Let me get my board and hopefully it's not too big. Like I said, I get these from the Dollar Tree. Trying to get that bubble out. And you want to be careful. You don't want to pull on your flock too much because you can stretch the holes and you don't want to stretch the holes because they are specifically for SS10 rhinestones. So you don't want to stretch your holes and then when you try to brush in your rhinestones, you're wondering why they don't go down. Okay, so that's the design. Let me turn it this way so that you can see it. Class of 20, 24, grad all righty we're going to take our rhinestones and i like to pour uh oh there's another dot Okay. All righty. So I'm going to take my rhinestones. And I generally pour more than I think I need. Okay. 
because they like the buddy system. When they bump up into each other, they help them fall into place. And I just do small circular motions. And most of the time, you're not going to get all of them to fall into place. And that's why I have my pick tool. And then sometimes when you're brushing off the excess, you might brush one out of place. So one of my favorite parts of working with rhinestones, this process is peeling back the flock and revealing the design. And this is my second favorite part, brushing in the rhinestones. This is so relaxing to me and I like tilt my brush at an angle when I'm brushing off the excess rhinestones. And the part that I don't like is the cleanup. <laughs> so I need to get these out my way so that when I pick this up with the transfer tape, none of these extras won't be in the way. And say for instance, what I used to do in the beginning, if I had something like this, I would make um, two cuts. I would do the border in one cut and then have the wording in another cut. And doing it that way, you're kind of like wasting flock. So the new thing now is use tape, right? So if you wanted a two color design, a three color design, I would go in and use this tape and tape off the words, right? And then brush in the stones around the border. Pick that up with the transfer tape. Remove the, the masking tape here. Brush that in and then take that same piece of transfer tape. Um, not, yeah, transfer tape and pick up the rest. So you would use a hinge method, whereas you would, uh, let me move these stones out the way first before I... So I can show you my my border. Mm. I knew it never fails. Rhinestones all in the flow. Okay, so what I was saying was if you wanted a two color design using this one piece of uh, this one template, you would brush in the border. You would stick your trans your hot your transfer tape here so you can have the hinge method come down and pick that up. Then you can roll it back and that way your transfer tape is not moved. So everything will still be aligned and then you would brush in the stones in that center part, then pull your transfer tape over it and pick up the rest. But this is a one color design today. Alrighty, let me go look and see if I have any duplicate stones, any stones out of place.
All righty, let me go around. Okay, my border looks good. Now let me check the words. Okay, everything looks good. Let me get my transfer tape. I've done this hundreds of times, but I still get nervous because this is the do or die moment. You put this like in a taco shape, curved in the middle, and you go directly down in the center and then fan it out. Once you go down, you have to continue. You can't stop or hesitate because this transfer tape has like a staticiness to it. So if you like change your mind at the last minute, your stones may come out of place. Like right there. My transfer tape bent on me, so some of my stones came out of place. So what I'm going to do is place them back in the circle. That way, that way I'm ensured that they are aligned and in place. Okay, those are in place. I had two more, didn't I? Right here. One more right there. Okay, that should do it. And if your stone is not directly in the hole, while you still have your tape on it, you can press back into place. 
and you rub the tape over top of it to make sure that it is aligned. Now right here, right here I have tape, extra tape, and I don't like that because it's real sticky. And when I try to pull it up, it may jolt my uh, rhinestones and they may go flying everywhere. So I'm going to cut that off so that won't be a problem for me. Okay. And most of the time, all of the rhinestones will stick to the transfer tape. But sometimes you have stubborn stones that don't want to come up out the hole. And if that's the case, you just put the tape back down and press on it. You go slow just in case you have those stubborn stones that don't want to come up. What I like to do is turn my transfer on the back to make sure that all the stones have glue on it. Alrighty, I am going to put my cardstock on top of the grad topper to help me with alignment. So this is the front, this is the front, this is the back. So I'm going to turn it this way so that I can know how to put my transfer on top of even all around. I'm going to go put this on top of the heat press and then I will bring you over. Matter of fact, I'm going to cut off this extra tape. Look, one of my rhinestones flipped over on me. I'll just take my thumb and push it back into place. I need to cut this tape off because it's making the design shift. One more piece. One 
my stone shift it just push it back in place with your thumb all right let me take it over to the heat press and then i will turn the camera that way One moment, two. I have my heat press set at 350 degrees, medium pressure, and I'm going down for 15 seconds. At least 15 seconds. Different materials may take a longer time. Um, this is a glitter cardstock, so that glitterness of it might make it take longer, but we shall see. So far, so good. Uh-oh, one of my stones didn't adhere, so I'm going to go down for a few more seconds. Like I said, a thicker, rougher material may take a little extra seconds, but that's okay. don't increase the temperature you just increase the time okay let me get my grab cap And let me take the phone off the thing. So, this is the grad topper. There we go. They will be blinging all the way through graduation. All right now. Bye-bye.